Hockey with Gamer Leaf, the podcast in which one man strives to level up his geekhood and helping you do the same one battle at a time. <laughs> now, let's get geeky with Gamer Leaf. Every trading post within 100 miles of here is a buzz of rumours that the cult of the Rock Wraith is operating beneath the ruins of Cadissium. According to the traders, the cultists are raiding towns and caravans to gather the required materials to strengthen the recently summoned beast. If you ask me, that's a load of rubbish. If the Wraith had been summoned, we would sure as fire know about it. Nonetheless, I want you to check it out. Bring back proof that there isn't any cultist activity, or on the off chance that there is, deal with it before the wraith gets a chance to leave the did room. that sound for me you guys it didn't to me but this is a story of dangerous descents deadly adventure modules for dnd fifth edition and we're lucky enough to have on the creator and mastermind behind this great one shot rob is that correct rob is that how you fit into line with dangerous descents yeah, absolutely. I uh, I wrote most of these. Uh, I'm the lead author. Awesome. Obviously. Thank you so much for joining us on Getting Geeky with Game Relief. We really appreciate it. Oh, it's great to no be here. No problem. Um, so before we get into Dangerous Descents, let's rewind a little bit if we could. We don't have to go back too far, of course, unless you were born into role-playing games. But how did you get started into role-playing games? Well, I got started into role playing games um, because I was kind of a, a teenager, and I was I was just looking for something to do, um, and I'd always dismissed Dungeons and Dragons. You know, I always knew I was a nerd, but I was like, oh, I'm not going to do Dungeons and Dragons. That's that's too far for me, you know. But I never really gave gave it the time of day, and I think within 25 minutes of actually googling it and looking it up, what it was, I was like, I want to do this. You know, this is so completely different to what I what I thought it would be. Um, and then I, I kind of searched for groups in my area um, and joined one called the South End on Sea uh, Role Playing Society. I'm from South End on Sea in Essex in the United Kingdom. Um, and then it just went from oh, there. Okay, awesome. So does that mean you're quite young? Because when I was a teenager, they didn't have Google, I don't think. Yeah, I'm I'm in my uh, late. Oh, okay. Well, wow, cool. That's awesome. And so then you decided. So you got Googled and found out what Dungeons and Dragons was, and then it's been role playing ever since, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Has it always been Dungeons and Dragons, or have you played other? Oh no, I've played uh, so many different systems. I'm actually currently playing um, Pathfinder game once a month. Um, I'm playing. A uh, role master game for anyone out there who knows role master and pathfinder, uh, starfinder, um, or oh, what else? A uh, really old, uh, a really old one. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> I play so many. I play so many. Yeah, I played some from the seventies, from the eighties, nineties, just onwards. Some of them have aged really well. There you well. go. Yeah, the only one I've really played. Um, I played me and my friends played Middle Earth role playing with a red book or whatnot based on um, uh, yeah. Based on yeah, Lord, Lord of the Rings. Rings or whatnot back in the late 90s or whatnot. It was pretty fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the work of uh, Tolkien is pretty much the basis for all of role playing There you games. go, for sure. So um, some some people know and some people don't. Um, and I'm kind of, I think I kind of have an understanding or whatnot, but what's the difference between Pathfinder and 5th Edition? Okay, so Pathfinder was actually the response to fourth edition of Dungeons and Dragons. So there was a third edition and it was very complicated and everyone was like, mm, this is a bit of a mess. So then they released 3.5, which everyone loved. Um, and then they decided to take it, but it was still very complicated, right? It's, it, it took a couple of sessions to learn how to play it. And it's not very inviting to children if they have to play a few times before they understand the rules, right? Kids want to know, and uh, as well, teenagers want to know, how to play within you know twenty minutes of sitting down, so they released um, a new version called Fourth Edition, which just completely changed everything about the game, and it was universally uh, hated. And at the same time, another company came along called Paizo and released Pathfinder based on uh, Dungeons and Dragons. So it was essentially 
it's a sister game. You know, it uses a lot of the same rules, but it's old school. It goes back to the kind of 3.5 edition. And then 5th edition came along and ignored 4th edition and just made a kind of very open, very easy to learn game that you could learn within 15 minutes or even less if you're a player. A dungeon master, it takes a little bit longer. But if you're just playing the game, you could learn 5th edition in about 10 or 15 minutes. Pathfinder, it's still going to take you a couple of hours before you've got to grasp. Oh, wow. So 5th edition is a lot easier then? Yeah, it's a lot more streamlined. It's a lot easier. Um, and there's pros and cons, obviously. Some people like a, a very mechanically complicated game like Pathfinder. Some people um, like, you know, this very easy sit down and just role play game like 5th edition. 5th edition, it's easier for role playing, right? Because you're not, you're not doing maps all the time. But uh, Pathfinder, there's certainly more character. Oh, okay, options. yeah, because I um, it's been a while since I listened to it, but there's a podcast I liked. Um, it's based off. It's called um the Glass Cannon Podcast, based off of uh, they're doing a they're playing um Pathfinder right now, but they're constantly. I don't know if they do the same thing in Fifth Edition, but they're constantly they like roll a dice and then they'll add all these modifiers and stuff in, and so I get kind of lost there. Do they do the same thing in Fifth Edition? They certainly do, but it's um, it's not as complicated. There's there's less uh, hanging modifiers. They're called, you know, uh, fifth edition. It's very simple. You you only add like one or two modifiers. So like you've got an attack modifier, you've got a damage modifier. It's very simple. Pathfinder, these things are all over the place. You know, <laughs> you could have your attack modifier, and then that's affected by a certain ability. It's also affected by like your position. Uh, and so it's it's a lot more complicated, a lot harder to do. It's easier to just roll the dice and say, okay, so it's I rolled a four, and uh, I have my strength to that, which is also four, so I get eight. You know, that's very simple, but that's not the case in Pathfinder. Oh, okay, yeah, so okay, so I'm not just lost or whatnot. So uh, have you ever played any role playing games where there's not modifier? You roll the dice, and that's what you get. Yeah, I have. That's a roll master. It's a game from the uh, I think seventies or eighties. You just roll the dice, and that's your result. You don't have modifiers. Oh, okay, cool. Do you have a preference on? I, I know. Imagine you like the fifth edition, as you made a uh, what do you call it? a one and done in it. But do you have a preference on uh, role playing systems or whatnot? Well, I mean, I've I've released now uh, twenty uh, adventure modules for fifth edition, so I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and say fifth edition. Oh, okay. There you go. That makes sense. Well, I don't know if you've ever played um uh, Ed Jo. Hey, do you know Ed Joet from over there in the UK? No. Okay, okay, yeah, he's constantly making um what he's got air of the empowered or whatnot. Um and it's powered by D ten or whatnot. So yeah, uh -huh. he's constantly making it's based off of a comic book that he makes or whatnot. He's constantly making new adventures or whatnot of his own role playing system. Yeah, I out. can send you a link after we're done and whatnot, but yeah, he's constantly making these new systems. We have him on the podcast quite quite frequently as he's always got a Kickstarter and whatnot on, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, Kickstarter is so, such a fantastic platform to reach people. For sure, for sure. So word on the street is that you guys, you currently have something on Kickstarter. What can you tell us about Dangerous Descents, Rob? So Dangerous Descents are, is kind of my answer to the community question of why is 5th edition so easy, right? Everyone, uh, there's quite a lot of old school gamers and new school gamers as well that love 5th edition, but all of the adventures are pretty pretty easy, right? They're pretty hand-holding. Unless you make some ridiculous mistakes, you're not going to die. Your characters aren't going to die. You're going to survive. Um, old school, kind of very early stuff, Gary Gygax, for example, he, he created Dungeons and Dragons. His adventures were lethal, right? You would go into his adventures knowing that your character was going to die, so you took extra sheets with you with, with new characters on it to replace yours in an instant. That's not the case anymore, but there is certainly demand for that. And that's what my modules are, the Dangerous Descents. They are uh, very, very difficult. You might die for no reason. Well, you won't die for no reason. You might die for bad luck. Um, it's not always going to be your fault if your character dies, but just bring extra characters with oh, you. Okay. Awesome. So you have to bring your character. So you're going to die a lot in your game? Oh, yeah. Absolutely do not bring characters that you're attached oh, to. Oh, boy. So what's the, what's the uh, method behind that? You just want to see the character suffering? 
Well, a lot of people like the challenge, right? I played through um, Tomb of Horrors, which was which is a notoriously difficult uh, Dungeons and Dragons adventure from the seventies. I played through that with my players um, after playing traditional fifth edition stuff, and they had such fun with their characters. Like, oh, you turn a corner, or you didn't check that the door was trapped, so you've lost an arm, or something like that. And they were having such a laugh uh, every time something went wrong. And I thought, wow, people love this stuff. And there's not that much of oh, okay, it. yeah. So that's awesome that they, that they really have kind of found a loving to it or whatnot. Yeah, it's like a shared suffer- suffering, right? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there you go. I know uh, my wife is somewhat of an author or whatnot. And so she's been in the community of authors for a while or whatnot. And they are always talking about, um, like, since I've been following them and whatnot, they're always talking about in their books and stuff, how they can go ahead and make their characters suffer. Is that kind of the same idea you have going on? Yeah. I mean, you've got to have, um, it's more of a, um, it's more of a humorous thing. You know, you play it. It's quite funny. You know, if you, it takes a, you know, a couple of minutes to make a character, you can just grab some off the internet very quickly, but then to see this character, um, either, you know, for example, you walk in, in shadows below Colosseum. I'm going to do a bit of a spoiler. So if anyone uh, plans on playing through it, uh, stop listening now. Just for a few Yeah, moments. close your ears. We'll, we'll let you know when to come back in. Yeah, so the very first um, room you go into, you go in there, it's not trapped or anything. It's just, it's just a normal room. And everyone's like, oh, okay, so these, are, these aren't as dangerous as you think. And then both doors leading out of the room are also fine. They just they just swing open, right? So you're like, oh, okay. It lulls it lulls you into a false sense of security. But then as soon as you take a step out of the room into either corridor, uh, the floor gives way and you fall on these spikes. Oh. Right? So that's quite yeah. It's quite humorous, right? So you're like, oh, okay, this room's safe. Okay, let's go through this door, and you fall on onto some spikes. Oh, okay, yeah, that's pretty cool. And are there a lot of different bad guys and stuff that you had to fight out, go up against? There are certainly different bad guys. We've got unique villains um, as well that are that are completely unique to these stories. They're not taken from any Dungeons and Dragons book. They're written for it. They've got their own stats and uh, abilities and all of this. Um, those are going to be those are included as well. Um, it's mo- most of the dungeon, uh, the trouble in the dungeons or the adventures is from the traps. Uh, magical traps on mechanical traps. okay that's pretty cool so um how so is this let's see how how many adventures is this module or what how many modules this is uh this is four adventures um unless we reach our our, our uh, stretch goal of five thousand pounds then it's five adventures and you don't have to pay extra for the fifth one um and then if we go even further and reach a very ambitious goal of seven thousand pounds then it's six. Oh, okay, so you're just gonna keep going, I guess, or is that where you're gonna stop? Yeah, yeah. The more money it makes, the more adventures we're gonna add to it, and it's the same price. So it's priced up for four adventures. It's a very good price. It's twelve pounds of four adventures. So very good price considering these adventures take five or six hours to play through each. Um, so it's a very good price already, but then you get these kind of extra adventures if it's uh, the more successful the Kickstarter campaign. Is. Well, there you go. What's a what's a movie to cost to go see over there? Uh, it's about eight or nine pounds. For and that's le- that's a lot less hours, isn't it? That certainly is. So I mean, if you're looking at six hours per dungeon, there's four dungeons. Uh, it's like twenty four hours to play through all of it. For so it's a it's a cost of about fifty pence, which I think is about thirty five cents per hour. Oh, well, there you go, there you go. So you yeah, so that's awesome. So yeah, you definitely go ahead and check it out. And um, are they written completely, or you're still working on, them or what's the situation with that? I'm still working uh, on, on tweaks and stuff. They're being they're being play tested at the moment. You know, all the artwork's in place. Everything's all in place, ready to go. But I'm just um, playtesting them, seeing if if some stuff is too harsh, if some stuff is too soft, uh, whether people enjoy it. Because sometimes you write a bit and you play through it with a group of people or a couple of groups of people. And you think it's going to be very entertaining, right? And they just sit there looking at you, blank-faced, bored, and you're like, okay, well, that 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 was a hit and a miss. 
right? So you just rewrite that bit. Oh, okay, cool. So how does that work with the play testing? Usually, um, we do a lot. We do do stuff with role playing, but I do a lot of stuff with uh, board games, and usually they. Uh, for the most part, uh, most of the board game interviews I have and whatnot with people, they've already done the play testing or whatnot for the board games. But it seems a little bit different with the role playing games. Like, so how how does that go down? So it's certainly different with the role playing games because um, the rules are already there. So you, you're not testing the rules or the mechanics of the game because he uses Dungeons and Dragons, which is a fantastic game, very streamlined, very easy to use. What you're testing is the enjoyment of these particular adventures uh, and how they flow. Because it's, it's, it's a narrative. Oh, okay, so, so you guys sit down and play with other people? Yeah, you sit down. or So you, you have a one person running the game, the dungeon master or the game master, uh, as I'm sure you know from Glass Cannon. And then you have three to five players. And you sit down, I always run it, and I run it um, for a group of three, three people, and then I run it for a group, of, a separate group of people uh, and just see how what parts they enjoy, what parts they don't enjoy. Um, if any of the kind of read-aloud text that's written to be read out to the players is a bit stumbly to say, I rewrite that. So it's easier to say, it's easier to flow. Uh, it's just all this stuff. And at the end of each game, I say to people, what did you enjoy about it? What did you not enjoy about it? Um, give me some suggestions. And I take all that into account to try and make the best version of these adventures as possible. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So during playtesting, I know you said you're still in the process or whatnot, but during playtesting thus far, have you had to scrap anything just because it won't work? Yeah, I actually had to, um, in one of our adventures, I think the level one adventure, oh, actually, let me check. I'm not even sure there is a level one adventure. Yeah, no, there is. The Wailing Fields. I had to scrap a whole room, like a whole room from the map and the uh, and the the dungeon. It just it was just boring. I mean, it looked it looked like a lot of fun when you sit down and you read it. It's like a paragraph or whatever. Each room is like a paragraph. And you read it, and you're like, "This is cool, right?" Then when you sit down and play it, and you read it out loud to the players, and the players go into the room. It just wasn't working. It just wasn't entertaining. So it's very different, you know. Oh, okay. So each room is a paragraph and then they just make up their own story or how does that go? So the story's there already. Um, so you basically, in this case, obviously from the from the introduction, you know that there's a, there's a cult uh, that may or may not have summoned an, uh, an evil creature and uh, they're hiding in the ruins beneath Cadissium. So the players have to go there and figure out whether there is or isn't this evil creature um what the cult if there isn't what the cult is really doing whether they're a cult at all they might be bandits you have to just kind of find out what's going on um and all of that has to be written into the adventure for the dungeon master or the game master to know before the players even go in there oh, okay so yeah you gotta have everything written down before they go in there you uh during role um the play testing do you ever let somebody else be the gm or dm or do you all are you always going yeah, occasionally I do. Occasionally I do, but not until it's at a later stage. Because at, at early stages, I can use kind of I can use shorthand for descriptions and stuff before I streamline it, and then I flesh it out before I give it to someone else. Okay, cool. And so this um, project has already reached its funding goal and stuff. So, um, so with the playtesting, how much longer will that be, and when should people anticipate? getting their finished product do you think rob well um our estimated delivery date is in july it's pdf as well so there's no shipping costs or anything like that it just turns up in your inbox uh you know so that that should be in july everything should be done by Ju july we've reached we should be reaching our next stretch goal which is extra art um so obviously that's gonna that's gonna push things back a little bit but no further than July. So we've got June next month, and then obviously, you know, July after that, it will come at some point in July, depending on how fast the artist is and this sort of stuff. Okay, is it all PDF, or is it some of it? Can you get a real book, or? Uh, not at the moment. We, we get our set for, this is our fourth Kickstarter, our fourth set of adventures. Um, every time we get asked that, and every time I would love to get a new book, get a proper book but you know graphic designers to to do the layout and everything very expensive okay so 
so yeah so that's awesome so has there a lot of um a lot of people wanting PDFs or whatnot. I've ne- I would always think of the book, but back when I started, like when I was playing and stuff, they didn't really have the electronic finagle devices they have nowadays. Yeah, there's huge demand for PDFs. I mean, we've already got 120 free backers. Um, on our last products, we've got you know two to three hundred people each time. Um, but people do want books. But people are people are happy with PDFs because they load it up on their iPad or their laptop instead of reading it from a book. Okay, cool. That's awesome. So, yeah, so that's good. So, per se, um, I don't know. I guess you could be the DM or you could be one of the players, but per se, me and yet, me and you and possibly some other people sat down to play Dunger- Dangerous Descents, the 5th edition, um, one, one and Done or whatnot, or what, do you call it a one-shot or one and done, or what's the... One-shot, one-shot. The one-shots for it. Um, per se, we sat down to play those. What would they look like? I mean, what would they sound like? This is a podcast after all, Rob. Yeah, well, I mean, for the players, it would just look like any game of Dungeons and Dragons. You'd have, uh, traditionally, your Dungeon Master sat at one end of the table with his pile of dice or his phone that has a dice roller on it. Um, and he would have, you know, he would either print out the PDFs and have them as a stack of paper in front of him with the story in, or he would have them on his phone or his laptop or his iPad. And then the four players would sit there with their character sheets and hopefully spare character sheets because these are very difficult and the character might die and their sets of dice. And for the players, it just looks like a normal game of d and uh, But for the, for the dungeon master, they get access to the story and all of the secrets and everything that's going on in the adventure. And it's up to the players to kind of find that out. So you and I would sit down and the dungeon master would read that opening text to us and we'd say to each other okay well we better go check out those ruins right and then the dungeon master will go okay well it's a day's travel from here so then we say okay we travel um you say if anything happens on the way it's that sort of back and forth oh, okay cool kind of telling the story and whatnot so that's awesome so um per, now per se somebody's falling asleep rob it wouldn't be because of you or this great um adventure you have or would not be because of me and my podcast at the time of the recording we'd already um it's the first part of may and we already had like i want to say 74 episodes recorded since the uh, beginning of the year so they get a little tired of hearing me drone on and on but now they're suddenly both jolted awake so they don't hit that oncoming traffic and you have their full attention why should they take a chance on your adventure as opposed to especially with all the other great things they have on the kickstarters currently well i mean if you're looking for dungeons and dragons adventures we've released 20 already right we've every single one of them has been five stars we've never got a review below five stars ever um so you know there's there's a lot going on there you can go onto the Kickstarter and you can see how the PDF interior layout and the Kickstarter is Dangerous Descents 5E. Just search for that. Um, you know, we, uh, I don't mean to brag, you know, by saying we've only got five star. I think maybe because there must be people out there that don't like our work, but they're kind enough not to leave negative reviews. But we get a lot of positive feedback. We've got a great community. Um, and these are just interesting adventures. Okay, cool. Yeah, definitely check it out. And we'll make sure we leave the sh- link in the show notes so they can just click that as well. So that's awesome. What other adventures have you created? So we, we created uh, 20 adventures for an adventure line called uh, Drag and Drop Adventures. And that's a bit of a pun because you can just drag and drop them, right? Um, these adventures seamlessly insert into your homebrew campaign. Um, they have, they're kind of self-contained, uh, yeah, they're, they're self-contained adventures as simple as that, you know, you can play as your characters from your normal campaign. So if you've got characters that you like, you're attached to, you can hop into one of these and play them and you probably won't die, but you have a fun time and you you have, uh, some good, uh, interesting stories to play along with. It's important to remember that the Dungeons and Dragons is a, is a cooperative storytelling game. Okay, cool. But they're probably gonna die if they go ahead and pick up Dangerous Descent, though. So then they yeah, it's a it's a different sort of game, or a different sort of module. Your characters are probably gonna die, but it's gonna be a laugh, right? You get a couple of guys or you know girls and guys together. My my home group, for example, it's half women. 
you have a couple of beers or a couple of glasses of wine or whatever you want to drink, uh, you just have a laugh, you know, rolling dice and hoping and hoping that you're smart enough to w- make your way through the adventure without your character perishing. And then you get all the all the treasure and the loot and the, the acclaim of being able to finish one of these things. Cool. Has anybody ever lived through it with one character? Oh, yeah. Yeah, people do. It's like Dungeons & Dragons on extra hard mode. Okay, awesome, awesome. So that's pretty cool. And let's see here. So you said they'll get it by july or whatnot if they back it what's it going to put somebody back to be able to get the pdf so the pdf for all four adventures and all of the stretch rewards is 12 pounds i don't know what that is in dollars um i think if you load up the kickstarter on your page it should display that in dollars but i think it's about 15 dollars 16 dollars okay yeah and then if you pledge 40 pounds um, you get everything we've ever written. Okay, that's for fifty-four dollars. So yes, yeah, so I see that too. So that's pretty cool. That is absolutely everything we've ever published. Uh, all of them, you know, fifteen to twenty adventures, uh, loads of in-game supplements as well, like characters and uh, that sort of stuff. But that's that's probably our best value one because that's worth about. It's worth over a hundred pounds, and it costs forty. Okay, awesome. And let's see here. So if they're playing it, they're gonna need uh, some D and D stuff to play, aren't they? Or can they just pick up one of your books? Yeah. Well, you're gonna need at least the uh, basic rules for Dungeons and Dragons. The basic rules for Dungeons and Dragons they're available online for free. <clears throat> oh, okay, that's good. And probably some dice or something. Or you said dice rolling apps or. You can, there, there are dice rolling websites or apps for your phone, or if not, you need a, a poly set of dice, which is D20, uh, a D12, a D10, a D8, a D6, and a D4. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so then you can, and then you can start playing right away. So that's awesome. So yeah, so we'll go ahead and check out Dangerous Descents. Deadly Adventure modules for D and D for Five E, and like Rob said, you want to make sure you bring more than one character sheet just in case. Yeah, bring more than one character sheet, and uh, be prepared for a fun time, right? Because it's it's all a bit of a laugh. For sure, for sure. So that's awesome. So now I don't know if you so you might not have gotten a chance to listen to any of our podcasts, and that's okay if you haven't, Rob. But the next portion of our podcast is called Adventures in Application Acquisition, where we talk about an app. Be it for a cell phone, a tablet, a computer, or even a video game. And it doesn't even necessarily have to be related to RPGs or anything like that. Just an app you use a lot of. Is there an app you use a lot of that we can talk about for a moment? Oh, okay. Well, let me check my phone. Okay. I'm a bit boring here in in terms of apps, right? But I have this great app called Forest. Okay, what can you tell us about Forest? It's a very simple app, right? It's for people who use their phone too much or who can't sit for a TV show without using your phone. So you go onto this app and you, you select a time zone, you know, or rather you select, a, you just say, oh, I want to I wanna put my phone down for 25 minutes or whatever, or half an hour. Um, and then you plant a tree using the button on the screen that says plant. And if you disturb your phone in those 25 minutes, you have to kill the tree to use your phone, right? So it adds this kind of, it makes you stop using your phone. It makes you stop just mindlessly going on your phone, checking Facebook or checking Twitter or whatever. So that you can sit through a movie, uh, you know, with your family or whatever without picking up your phone every five minutes. Oh, well, that sounds like something I need. Um, so is it a real tree? Like they'll plant a tree somewhere for you if you do? Oh, I, I wish it was, but it's not, no. Oh, boy. It's, it's a virtual tree. But for some reason... You feel bad about it, you know. If you, if you've been growing this tree on your phone, this virtual tree for half an hour, and then you're like, ah, no, I want to check my Facebook notifications, you have to kill the tree, right? But it's only a virtual tree. But for some reason, you get attached and you feel bad about it. And it's just it's just one. It just makes it harder to mindlessly, uh, you know, almost subconsciously check your phone. Uh, and it's just great. It makes you. Uh, really pay attention to your surroundings more oh boy awesome so are there a lot more virtual trees in the world because of this app for you rob absolutely yeah (laughs) i have a whole virtual forest well there you go that's pretty good and is that a free (laughs) app or is it something that costs it's free yeah it's free it's called Forest. I know it's on Android, I don't know if it's on iOS, but I suspect that it is. Okay, awesome. So if you were on the, the rights to uh, the Forest app, what would be one thing you would do to fix it or make it better, Rob? 
Mm, I would actually do what you suggested and plant trees. Say, for instance, for every uh, maybe 100 hours that someone is staying focused, be present, that's the tagline. For every 100 hours that people plant trees in the game, I would allow them to have a tree planted somewhere in the real world. Well, there you go. Um, and we try to make a green podcast. I guess that goes along with the whole tree thing, so that's good. But if anybody that has anything to do with development or anything with the Forest app, uh, you heard it here first on Getting Geeky with Game Relief, what Rob would do to make it a better app. Yeah, I don't know that it would make it uh, much better, but it would certainly make it uh, make you feel a lot worse if, you, <laughs> if you're... Uh potentially damaging the chances of planting real trees just by checking our emails. Well, there you go. There you go. So he, he gives us virtual paper, and then he's also with the whole um, RPG game thing game he's got going on. And then he's also got virtual trees going on with the forest app. Yeah, it's a whole ecosystem. There you go. Awesome. So, yeah, we don't want to keep you all. I guess it wouldn't be all night. For me, it'd be all night, but it'd be all day for you, Rob. But we really wanted to... Thank you for coming on, getting geeky with Game Relief. Mind us coming over there to the UK to stalk you personally. How would people go about keeping up with you or what you guys got going on with your role-playing adventures? So you can follow us on Kickstarter to get a notification every time we launch a project. You can check out our Facebook, that's Dragon Turtle Games. You can go on our face, our Twitter, that's Dragon Turtle G, because there weren't enough characters for Dragon Turtle Games. Or you can... Uh, I'm in a load of Discord groups that you can... If you, if you knock around... You can try and find me on there and uh, on Twitch. We're also on Twitch as uh, Dragon Turtle Games. So pretty much just Google Dragon Turtle Games. Uh, and we're very easy to reach. If you have any questions about any of our modules, shoot us an email, shoot us a DM, shoot us a uh, whatever, anything. Or obviously go on our website, which is dragonturtlegames.com. Oh, okay, awesome. And um, really quickly, how did you come up with the whole Dragon Turtle Games uh I guess, uh, title, or how did you come up with that? Well, I was, uh, I was in Hong Kong when I started Dragon Turtle Games. I was there on holiday. Uh, and the Dragon Turtle is everywhere, right? It's no a good problem. luck symbol in Hong Kong. Um, also, a couple of weeks previous, my players had, uh, you know, they've been playing these same characters for a year, a year and a half, and their characters had been eaten alive by a Dragon Turtle, which unfortunately killed them. So it was fresh on my mind, this kind of Dragon Turtle that, that, ruined the story for everyone and uh, i was seeing them everywhere and i thought you know it's quite an iconic dungeons and dragons monster dragon saddle um and obviously it's a good luck symbol in hong kong where i was at the time oh, okay so that's pretty cool yeah so we'll go and like i said we'll go ahead and link, link in the show notes so they can go ahead and um have an easier time finding dragon turtle on there sometimes people get a little bit tired and they don't want to i guess necessarily type stuff in so they'll go ahead and just click the link or whatnot yeah yeah that, that works fine but awesome yeah so like i said we don't want to keep you all day rob but we really appreciate being able to catch up with you and talk about your one shot adventures yeah it's been it's been great being on i hope to come on at some point in the future as well well that'd be cool so yeah we'll let you go but i appreciate you coming on all right thanks a lot it's time for Kickstarter Corner. <laughs> to begin now. Okay, ladies and gents, you heard it right. Now, this Kickstarter Corner, I just went ahead and recorded everything, and then somehow it didn't save. So I gotta go back in and tell you about these games again. Okay, so here goes nothing. We've got the Book of Dark Secrets, D&D 5th Edition Pathfinder Adventures. We've told you about a little bit of the books and whatnot. Now go ahead and check out the art and the video over there on the Kickstarters. It's a two fill-in adventure anthology books for D&D 5th Edition and Pathfinder compatible RPG adventures. Each book print and digital and each 200 plus pages. Definitely check this one out. They're almost at 400% of their goal. They've got some very exciting adventures. I'll tell you what, people. I just went through reading all about it, and the information that I read got canned. For some reason, it didn't record, and my voice is almost shot. Plus, I got to get to bed, so I apologize. But you want to definitely check out this campaign. They've got... Probably less than 48 hours by the time you hear this great game. And then we've also got 
Cryptocuffs, a card game about cryptozoology. Cryptocuffs is a card game involving some of your favorite cryptozoological creatures battling it out to see who's a top cryptid. Definitely check this out. They've got people like Bigfoot and the Yeti. So maybe if you know our favorite show, which is Scooby-Doo, you might know some of these creatures. But these ones aren't wearing masks. And they have 20 days to go at the time of this recording. They go through the 4th of June. And we just barely had the creator of the show on of this game on the show. The Swords of Valor card game. It's a sword fighting card game. It gives you the opportunity to join them in the sword fight list with all without having to go through all those pesky years of training. I hope they make their goal. They've got about a week to go by the time you hear this, a little bit over a week. While you were sleeping, and while I was sleeping, guess what happened? That's right. That game that Princess Leaf always teased us about was to trick your kids into learning math and about the electoral college, not the electrical college, like I kept saying, but the electoral college, election run, election night, Learn your way to the White House. It's a fun game to master timetables, addition facts, geography of the civic and civics of the Electoral College. Has funded, yes, it's funded. It's at 21,123 at the time of this recording. And they've got three days to go. Check out final stretch of election night. Almost there. Update number four said 90%, but they're at over 100%. So definitely go check it out and back it now so you can get this game. And then don't forget about No Escape. No Escape is a competitive maze building. Take that game for two to eight players. They've got probably about 48 hours or so by the time you hear this game. And they're at 7000 out of their $15,000 goal. I hope they make it. It sounds like a fun game. And then we've also got Forgotten Fight. It's a deck building card game. You need to choose your team of three heroes to prove that you know the best combo. Definitely check this one out. Go ahead and back it for a dollar. And then you can get all the updates. It seems like there's been an update every day of the campaign. It's definitely fun. And then we've also got um, oh, this one I wanted to tell you about. I don't know. They're kind of struggling. So check it out. It's Tactical Meeple Depot Game Bag. It's a quality game bag at a reasonable price. You can decorate with board game theme moral patches. And August Games is the backer of this. They're actually going to have a, a badge for Treasure Mountain on this if they go ahead and get that far. So definitely check it out. You can put your games in and take it to cons and have morale badges. Maybe Getting Geeky with Game Relief will have one if they're successful. So I hope they are. And then don't forget about Treasure Mountain. Yes, Siri Bob, Treasure Mountain. It combines worker placement and tile laying to create a unique experience where you can bump other workers off spaces and take actions. They've got 17 days to go, or they go through the 1st of June, and they fund it in less than 33 hours. And last but not least, we've got the Pit the Board game. It's a four-player co-op dungeon crawler set in an epic sci-fi universe. Inspired by the cult classic video games. It reminds me of video games when I was a kid. Definitely check out the Pit the Board game. Now on the Kickstarters, they're about halfway to their goal. They're almost at 17000 out of almost 36000 And they go through the 10th of June. Definitely check that one out on the Kickstarters. Whoa, that was close. I almost forgot one, but not to worry. We've also got on their Merry Way board game, which is relaunching or just relaunched yesterday. So definitely check that one out. It's a light strategy board game featuring Robin Hood's Merry Men with an all new path building mechanic and one of the kind art. Definitely check that one out. They're relaunching and we had the creator on. Go back and listen to our episode so you can find out all about this great game on the Kickstarters. Anyways, go ahead and keep on listening and you'll find out some more great stuff. What's going on with Getting Geeky with Gamer Leaf. And yeah, reminder to listen to the episode that we have running this Friday as you can find out if you're one of the lucky winners of eight board games from our last giveaway as well as two lucky listeners outside of the U.S. which are 
numbers have dropped. We're now about above 75% in the U.S., but we also wanted to not leave you out of the U.S. out of it. So definitely check that out because two of you, lucky listeners, will win $25 Amazon gift cards. So definitely check that out and don't be left in the dark because you'll have a week to get back to us via email. Anyways, it's our least favorite time, your least favorite time. Time to get on with your life. Time for us to get on with our lives. So go ahead and get geeky, stay geeky, and bring others in the geek fold. And we'll catch you all on the flip side. If this wasn't deleted and it was saved, then this is the last time I record in this Kickstarter corner. So we'll catch you all on the flip side. Game Relief out. <laughs> Gamer Leaf levels up. Tune in next week to see if Gamer Leaf's luck holds up. <laughs> <laughs>